Welcome to this service on Homelessness Sunday. Today in our prayers and in the sermon, we will focus on homelessness and a Christian response. I'd like to thank everyone who contributed to our Harvest Festival last week, whether through donations to the Bishop's Harvest Appeal or donations to the Olive Branch. For the foreseeable future, we will continue to have a collection box outside the vicarage front door so that we can continue to support the Olive Branch in the winter and the months ahead of us. For our service today, our reader is Michelle Clark. Reverend Barbara Jones will be leading our prayers of intercession. And we will have two hymns. The first will be played by Christine, I come with joy. And the second, as it fits so well with the Sunday, is played on behalf of St. Martin's in the field, and it's brother, sister, let me serve you. The words of the liturgy can be found on the St. Paul's Scotfirth website. We'll be using a service of word for the season of Trinity. We take a few moments now to quiet our hearts for worship. Come gather before God who spans the heavens. Come gather before God who fashions each human cell. Come gather before Christ known across the centuries and nations. Come gather before Christ who encounters each one of us. Come gather before the Spirit who dances through time and space. Come gather before the Spirit who weaves our lives together. Amen. Together we say, Faithful One, whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer, and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins to Almighty God. O King enthroned on high, filling the earth with your glory, holy is your name, Lord God Almighty. In our sinfulness we cry to you to take our guilt away and to cleanse our lips to speak your word through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father forgive you by the death of his Son and strengthen you to live in the power of the Spirit all of your days. Amen. Let us give thanks to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing. Before the world was made, God chose us in Christ that we might be holy and blameless before him. Let us praise God for the glory of his grace, for the free gift he gave us in his dear Son. To Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, give praise and dominion, honor and might, forever and ever. Amen. A prayer for Homelessness Sunday. Heavenly Father, Thank you for who you are and for giving us hope and help us not to forget that people are homeless every day across our nation. We pray for those sleeping under bridges, on park benches, in doorways or bus stations, for those who can only find shelter for the night but must wander in the daytime for families broken because they could not afford to pay the rent, for those who have no relatives or friends who can take them in, for those who have no place to keep possessions, for those who are afraid and feel hopeless, for all people affected by homelessness, we pray that you will help us to provide shelter, security, comfort and hope. 
Jesus, help us to see your face in the eyes of every homeless person we meet, so that we may be empowered through word and deed and through all the means we have to bring justice and peace in their time of need. Stir our hearts to move more deeply in our walk with you so that we can be active to share your love with our neighbors and the community. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. My brothers and sisters whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, Stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge you, dear and Sintich, to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. And the God of peace will be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Once more, Jesus spoke to the chief priests and Pharisees in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, 
while the rest seized his slaves, maltreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. And the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is the gospel of our Lord. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Two years back, a sculpture by a Canadian artist appeared before St. Anne's Church in Manchester. The sculpture depicts a man sleeping rough in a bench with his feet that has been pierced by nails. Well, the sculpture was called Homeless Jesus. This particular sculpt sculpture has traveled across the world and had been installed to draw attention to homelessness and rough sleeping in some of the biggest cities in our world. As you know, homelessness is a serious issue in our own country. All the disheartening stats is available for us in the public domain. We may even have walked past a homeless person sleeping rough in the market. And many do come to our vicarage door seeking help. This Sunday has been set aside in our church to think about homelessness and its impact on many people's lives. People become homeless due to many reasons, but the chief among them is due to poverty or failure within the social network, social security to provide for themselves or for their family. It is rather shameful that as an affluent society such as ours, that we still see people falling through those cracks in our social system. The homeless Jesus sculpture draws attention to this reality. I can't help but read our gospel from this homeless Jesus perspective. If we were to look through the eyes of this homeless Jesus, the parable takes a whole new meaning. It's not about the king's gracious invitation, but our eyes are drawn to the poor man who was probably standing in the street or sleeping in the street and was invited and shows up in the wedding banquet without proper wedding clothes but then gets thrown out of the banquet with his hand and foot bound, cast into darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. Perhaps we should not be quick to compare Jesus to the king. Instead, maybe, maybe the homeless person who might have ended up in the banquet without proper wedding clothes. In the last couple of chapters in Matthew where Jesus was talking about the kingdom of heaven or the rule of Christ that he was trying to offer in this particular context, even as we began reading in this gospel, as he was preaching to the Pharisees and all those religious leaders, 
Jesus has been critiquing those very leaders in Jerusalem, openly confronting them for abusing their authority, their privilege, all in the name of God, rather than caring for God's people. So I began wondering, for who turns down the invitation of the king to his son's wedding? Even if one is not a strong supporter of a particular king, don't you think you would just show up out of curiosity, just to mingle with the high flyers and the celebrities? We hear in this parable, the king rules with threat, violence and vengeance, even, even though at first it seems that violence is only in response to violence already perpetrated by his citizens. Are we sure that Jesus is alluding to God here? I cannot help wondering if those who refused to come actually were protesting. Is it possible that this ruler was actually an unjust, very exploitative ruler, where the poor and the marginalized and the excluded really suffered? I know it is very hard to justify mistreating and the killing those of king's slaves who had no other real choice but to deliver the message with which they were sent. One does not know what happened between the slaves and the people before such violence was perpetrated on them. Like many tyrants, when the king became angry, he destroyed the city itself the city that belonged to him, including the innocent ones. Following Jesus' kind of subversive and radical attitude, I wonder if Jesus was the one without that wedding robe, the one who could not, the one who would not pretend to honor a merciless king, a tyrant, by putting on that wedding robe who on behalf of all of us was possibly thrown into the outer darkness where there was weeping and gnashing of teeth. Isn't it just likely that the kingdom of heaven that Jesus was talking is more like any one of us who are excluded, who are left out, who are left in the street, or who refuse to bow to the powers that be when innocent suffer then like a king who throws his power around and destroys those who would not do his will? For me, this parable goes further in challenging the notion of an autocratic, ruthless God. Jesus tries to subvert, Jesus tries to change that very perspective. The religious leaders who are Jesus' audience knew exactly what he was saying because they have not cared for God's people, because they have sought to build their own kingdoms rather than God's, all in the name of God. The perspective of a homeless Jesus, this very sculpture draws, we can't but help look at this story from the perspective of those who have been excluded, those who have fallen through the crack, those who have been left behind in our society. It is more likely that the political powers, even in our times, are behaving much like the king in this story. Possibly even the church is complicit in certain ways by being quiet in the face of such obvious injustices in our society. We do preach the gospel, the good news of radical hospitality and God's love and mercy to the excluded, discriminated and marginalized. We invite all of them, if not the first time around, but at least later. What a joy, how wonderful. But, but when they do show up, they are found to be not 
dressed properly. They are not wearing the right type of wedding garments. For whatever reasons, they do not fit in because they are not like us. On this Sunday, as we think of the homeless in our midst, we are asked some uncomfortable questions. As Paul exhorts the church, could we see the church pursuing whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is commendable? Or are we busy building our own kingdoms where the homeless, as depicted by this homeless Jesus, is still waiting outside. Amen. Let us affirm our faith. We believe in God the Father who created all things, for by his will they were created and have their being. We believe in God the Son who was slain, for with his blood he purchased us from God from every tribe and language, from every people and nation. We believe in the Holy Spirit. The Spirit and the Church say, Come. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. God of all grace and goodness, we praise you. God of all hope and joy, open our hearts and minds to the needs of others. We pray for your church everywhere, remembering our mission partners, Stephen and Married Impey, managing Wycliffe Bible translators' Ethiopian work. We pray too for this parish, for our vicar, the Reverend Rebecca, for our church officers, thinking especially this week of our fabric committee, and we pray for all who help and belong. Thank you, Lord, for your unfailing love. Keep us centred in Jesus open to the joy set before us, and help us to show and share your love and joy, so that this church offers a welcoming home to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for the world you created and the people who share it with us. On this day, Homeless Sunday, we pray for people who are homeless, for refugees and asylum seekers, and for those who try to help and support them. May leaders at every level seek to develop compassionate and effective policies to help those who need protection and shelter. And may we learn to be content with enough and to be generous to those here and elsewhere who lack money, food or shelter. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our own country and its people in these challenging times, for government and officials whose decisions affect so many lives, for health service and care staff and police and emergency workers, that they may be supported and stay safe as they seek to help others. We pray too for people suffering hardship and financial problems because of the pandemic, that a national spirit of solidarity will enable there to be ongoing support for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our local community and ask your blessing on all who live on Rossmoyne Road, Ardengate and Chatsworth Road. We think of this whole area, both its joys and its problems, and today we pray especially for Lancaster and District Homeless Action Service in Edward Street, for local food banks, and for all agencies giving aid to those in crisis. We pray too for our children and young people that they may be helped to cope with disruptions to their education and lives, and for people of all ages that they may know they are valued simply for who they are. Lord, help us in our life together to speak gently and act with humility, to think on those things which are good, honourable and pleasing in your sight, so may we try always to help and encourage one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are ill or in trouble of any kind. Remember those known to us personally, 
and those who have family who are ill at home or in hospice or hospital care, and those of this parish who have asked for prayers of healing. Alan, Kath and family, Mary Wilson, Eunice Parkinson, Marion Corkill, Catherine McHale, Naomi Parsons, Pat Mitchell, John Fittler, L. Wiltshire, Betty Hartley, Jill Harker and Wendy Francis. We pray too for all women and men, girls and boys who do not have homes, those sleeping in doorways and parks, in hostels, night shelters or bed and breakfast accommodation, for families evicted because they couldn't pay their rent and for those without friends and family to help. We pray for any who are afraid and without hope and for all who are bearing burdens they find it impossible to share. Teach us, Lord, to realise that while we can't do everything to help everyone, each one of us can do something to help someone. Give us the wisdom to know when and how to help. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember those who have died recently and pray especially for the families and friends of Molly Leach, Alan Arkwright, and of those who have died because of COVID-19, that they may receive your strength and comfort in their loss. Lord, we remember with thankfulness and gratitude those who have left their mark on our lives, sharing love and laughter, but who have now gone on before us to be with Christ. We hold them in our hearts, knowing that you hold them safe in your heart and in your eternal home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us say together the Lord's Prayer. 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who flip against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We offer ourselves, our time, our talent, and our possessions to the glory of God. So we say together the offertory prayer. Gracious God, accept these gifts and with them our lives to be used in your service through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, our mystery, you bring us to life, call us to freedom, and move between us with love. May we so participate in your dance of Trinity, that our lives may resonate with you, now and forever. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you for joining us in this act of worship. We ask that you would be blessed this week, and we look forward to worshiping with you again soon. <laughs>